Hello. In this video, I'm going to share a recipe and some suggestions for how to make slow cooker red beans and rice. You don't have to have a slow cooker or crock pot, but the basic recipe that I will offer is for the slow cooker or crock pot. I will also give you some adjustments if you prefer to do it on the stovetop. If you're going to make the recipe that I have here, then you'll need the ingredients that are listed here on this slide. There are of course many varieties of red beans and rice that you can make and you're, you're welcome to try different recipes. I'll give you some tips about things to think about as you select recipes and try using this one or others. If you are trying to make this a vegetarian or vegan friendly dish, either because you're trying to reduce the amount of meat that you're eating and want to have something to eat through the week that doesn't involve any meat, this is a great option. It's also great for holiday meals where you might need to have something that's vegetarian or vegan friendly because the recipe I provide is meatless and so it can be both vegetarian and vegan friendly. A couple of things you'll want to watch for though, apart from the obvious, making sure that if, if you do stock instead of water, that you do a veggie stock rather than a meat stock, and also that you don't put any meat in it. You'll also want to think about the oil or butter that you use. Vegetarians, as long as they eat cow's dairy, should be fine with both. But if you're cooking for any vegans, you'll want to use a plant-based oil or a, ve a vegan variety of butter, which is made from plant-based oils. And then Worcestershire sauce is another thing that we maybe don't think about, but should be careful about because a traditional Worcestershire sauce usually has anchovies in it. So read the label and think about who's going to be eating and whether that matters. You can substitute soy sauce, tamari, or liquid aminos. All of those are completely plant-based. You can also find vegan-friendly Worcestershire sauce in the grocery store and online if you'd like to go that way. So you have some options of what to do. And if it comes down to you don't have any of those, you could leave it out or you could put a little lemon or lime juice in instead. Really, it's meant to help enhance the flavor and lemon or lime juice would be another option for a substitution. Though soy sauce or Worcestershire sauce would be a slightly richer way to give your red beans and rice some flavor. So this is the recipe that I like. I'm not going to make it here today. I actually already made it over the weekend and I will just give you some suggestions here of things you can do to spice it up and make it flavorful. One thing that I will caution you about is this recipe is a slow cooker recipe. And so it does call for you to either use canned beans or if you're using dried beans to make sure that they are fully cooked. Kidney beans in particular are toxic if they are not fully cooked. And if you put them dry directly into the slow cooker, they are not going to guarantee to be cooked fully by the time you're done. They need to be boiled for at least 45 minutes. You might find some stovetop recipes that call for you to boil the kidney beans in a pot and then add the other ingredients directly without draining the beans. That's perfectly fine. As long as you're boiling the beans for 45 minutes or longer, that's enough to make sure that the toxins are reduced. So just be careful about that. If you're trying to adjust any stovetop recipes for your slow cooker, make sure that you choose fully cooked beans that you add to the, the slow cooker before you begin cooking. Another thing that I would suggest if you are using the slow cooker is that you think about whether or not you want to saute all of the ingredients in the slow cooker, like the recipe calls for, you can put everything in the slow cooker. And if it's fully cooked already, or if it's something like a fresh tomato or just some onion and pepper, then those things can go into the slow cooker on low and, and they'll be fine after maybe six hours. But if you are 
putting in any raw meat, you'll want to make sure that you cook it on high in the slow cooker first, or else you'll want to cook it on the stove top first. And then another thing to think about is the onions and the pepper, the garlic, and any spices that you're adding. Slow cooker temperatures are really only basic compared to the stove top. So depending on how much control you want to have, you can put everything right in the slow cooker and follow the recipe and walk away. I like to saute my onion and garlic and then any peppers and spices on the stove top first because I know my stove top well and I know what temperatures are best for cooking these things to the tenderness and the spiciness that I like. So I went ahead and I did mine on the stove top first and transferred them then to the slow cooker. But you can also just follow the recipe as it is here. And everything will be will be just as good as, as well. I think that the 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 quality of your slow cooker really matters if you know that it does a good job on high of sauteing the onion and everything without burning it too much or without you know taking too much time to get to the tenderness that you like then it's fine but diff different slow cookers and crock pots may function a little differently and the range of temperatures for the high versus the low setting is not as controlled as it is on the stovetop. So those are the tips that I would give for cooking this. If you want to do the whole thing on the stovetop instead of in the slow cooker, you can do that as well. You might want to pay attention to the amount of liquid that you add. It calls for one half to one cup of water or broth, depending on how thick you would like your beans to be. When you're cooking on the stove top, you may need to be prepared to add a bit more liquid because you'll lose more liquid when you're cooking on the stove top than you do in the slow cooker on low. Otherwise, you can just follow the steps as they are, but do it on the stove top. And then you really only need to leave it on the stove top for maybe 30 minutes. You can leave it on longer. You can turn it on to low once everything has simmered for about 30 minutes and just leave it warm for a while. If you don't want to walk away and let it go for the day, or if you don't have a slow cooker that allows you to do that, that's a perfectly fine way to cook as well. There are, of course, many variations that you can do. What I did when I made my batch of beans and rice this time is I added a can of diced tomatoes. If you still have any straggling tomatoes from your own garden or from the farmer's market, you can also add one or two cups of fresh tomatoes in step one. After you've sauteed the onion, you can add the tomatoes in with the other ingredients, or you can add a 14 ounce can of diced or stewed tomatoes in step two along with the other ingredients. I've mentioned meat. If you're going to do meat, you can add that in step one and, uh, cook it straight in the stove, in the slow cooker. If you want to drain the grease, make sure you just cook it on the stove top first. Or you can add meat that's already been cooked and just do that in step two. But really red beans and rice is a great option for a meatless meal because there's plenty of protein. The rice will give you some protein and so will the beans. And you can just have that as an easy meal during the week if you're trying to skip out on meat for a certain meal. But it also is a, a good option to add as a side for an, any day or for a holiday. It's a, it's a really nice option to have for something like a holiday though, if you've got people who don't want to eat the meat that you're serving, either because they can't or they prefer not to. And so, this can be an easy way to prepare something because you can just put it all in the slow cooker if you have one, or you can make it a day ahead and just get it back out and reheat it if you don't have a slow cooker. There are lots of recipes, as I've said, you can explore different things, add different seasonings like chili powder or a Southwestern spice blend, lots of different things you can try. I put smoked paprika in mine this time but next time I might try something else, all kinds of things you can do.
I hope that the recipe and the tips that I've given you here are helpful and that you can enjoy some red beans and rice, which are a nice comfort food as the weather gets colder.